You're going to want to use precautions on this episode. You're going to want to get some duct tape and tape up your sides. Otherwise, they might split open because of how very funny the subject of today's video is. I think you'll find a uh, quick content warning. He's actually not funny at all. And there's going to be a lot of transphobia in, in the skit. I know that there shouldn't be based on what the premise of the skit is, but there's going to be so... Now I told you, and you, so that's... His name is J.P. Sears. He's kind of like if Dog the Bounty Hunter and Carrot Top had a baby, and they never showed the baby any love or affection, so it grew up with this cloying, desperate need for validation. According to his personal website, awakenwithjp.com, J.P. Sears is a YouTuber, comedian, author, speaker, and a curious student of life. Yes, I think we'll find that J.P. has a curious mind. I think we'll find that. His work takes an unapologetic stand for freedom, free speech, and encouraging people to live free from fear. You use the word three, what, three times in a sentence. This guy must fucking love freedom. And finally, I'm so sick of people apologizing for standing for freedom, free speech, and encouraging people to live free from fear. Those are good things. You should want to stand for those. Sorry if that's not woke anymore. The particular fish in a barrel I'd like to shoot today is the comedic masterpiece called Get this. Coming out as Christian to your liberal parents? <laughs> Love it. Love that. Because, like, these days, it's like Christians have to come out of the closet, you know? The thing that gay people are supposed to be the ones to have to do. Due in large part to bigotry from Chris. If the world weren't so topsy-turvy, they'd be the ones scared to be themselves. Anyway, get ready to bust a gut, you little freaks. Dad? What is it, honey? All right. Credit where credit is due. That's a funny line delivery, the way he said what. We're nothing if not fair around here. He said what in a funny way, and I'm mature enough to admit that. Tolerance is my number one virtue signal. You can tell me anything. Okay, well, um, I've been thinking about something a lot, and it's really confusing, and I just, I... What is mom doing? Let's pause here for a second, because, um... There's a few things I want to touch on a little, and none of them will matter exactly one second later in this scene. Firstly, can we talk about the set dressing? It's, it's, it's just a sign placed up against a wall in the background with some liberal slogans on it. And just don't. Just don't, just don't do anything then if you're going to be that lazy. And this, this is a small nitpick. Um, but the dad is reading Karl Marx, which is not lib stuff. Karl Marx, rather famously, I think, was was not a liberal. He he was a communist. It's, but like, can liberals read books they disagree with? Sure. Uh, do I think Jeepers Peepers understands the difference between liberals and communists? No, I don't. I don't think he understands pretty much most things. And lastly, I just got to ask: you have you have two characters in this scene. One of them is meant to be a Christian and the other is meant to be a wacky lib. And the one that is not meant to be a Christian is the one that you had dressed like a fucking priest. Why? Why did you do that? That's really confusing. Had to get those off of my chest because uh, this kid is about to take a pretty wild turn. Imagine if you were the hackiest, laziest conservative comedian. Like, go completely over the top in your mind. Like, give him zero credit. What do you think he would do next in this scene? And were you picturing exactly this? Oh, your mother's just planning for her gender reveal party. But this is her 19th one. I can't wait to find out what I am. I'm always impressed by that woman's self-awareness. Mmm, mmm, mm-hmm. Okay, dog, gender reveal parties are not a, a transgender thing. I know that you heard the word gender and, and you went into kind of a rage fugue, but typically they're a thing that trans people dislike. They're, they're usually performed by cis people to announce the genitals of their unborn children to a group of adults. And that's an example of the way that mainstream American culture and the type of gender normativity you're actually arguing for here are just fundamentally gross and perverse. Like, just fucked up nonsense for weird, creepy dopes. And we could and probably should discuss the idea that trans people are just flip-flopping their genders, changing them like socks, can't make up their minds, because that's not only untrue and wouldn't matter if it were true, and it's it's a hateful and dangerous lie. I want to talk about the hideous thing he is saying. I want to. I'm not going to, though, because I, I it's, it's far more interesting to me 
how he's saying it in such a frustratingly incoherent way. If I were trying to make the case that gender is something obvious about oneself that any self-aware person should be able to recognize, which I wouldn't, because it's a dumb thing to believe, I wouldn't choose to visually convey that by having a bearded man in drag who is meant to be another character in the scene's mother, because there's actually a lot of confusing elements to that character's gender presentation. And if it's meant to be obvious that they're just a confused woman, why not have a woman actor in the scene play them? Like, I know that you know one, JP, because there's one right there. Why did you do it? D do you see how that kind of undercuts your point? And the answer, I assume, is twofold. Firstly, conservatives are incapable of acknowledging even the existence of transgender men. They hear the word trans and they're, they're already picturing a bearded person in a dress. So he'd bedazzle and confuse his feeble-minded audience if he didn't meet that stereotype. Even if the person in the sketch is meant to have given birth, which most trans women tend to have a pretty hard time pulling off. Secondly, Jurassic Park Sears probably thought to himself, ah, this is a great chance for me to bust out my classic character. Correct. Crazy trans person. This is extinction level cringe. If I didn't already know that he was doing a bigotry here, I would assume he was having some sort of manic episode. I would think he was being exploited by some sleazy producer off screen. I'd assume this was some sort of ironic anti-humor scenario where we're meant to laugh at how unfunny he is and he wasn't in on the joke, like a really mean-spirited Tim and Eric sketch. But no, he thinks this is, he put this up on purpose. I think that I'm a Christian. Oh, honey, don't be silly. No, you're not. Confusion you're having, it doesn't mean you're a Christian. It probably just means you're trans. What? Take your time and think about this for a while. I'll call your mother's surgeon and make you an appointment. Like, like I, I get the, the bigoted point he's failing to make here, that like, it's so easy to get gender reassignment surgery. You just, you call up a dick smith and you get a dick forged at the dick anvil in, in, a, in, a, in a dick afternoon. And parents are just trying to force their children into being trans for some reason that we don't care to articulate it right now. It's basically, you just go into the hospital, you switch your genitals around like a Mr. Potato Head. It, it takes a couple hours and that's, that's all you gotta do, you know. Standard conservative opposite of reality brain poison. I know, I get that. But like, within the fiction that he has constructed, where did that come from in the conversation? I don't really see how being Christian and being trans could elicit the same type of feelings or even how a wacky lib gender maniac could come to that conclusion. Why are we still talking about trans people? What does that have to do with any of this? Look at what you're doing to your mother. <laughs> I stand with Ukraine. This whole skit is really quite strange to me because the bit, the bit he's doing is about, is about how libs are performative sheeple who just drop catchphrases and they virtue signal to look woke. But the whole video is him doing that. It's him pointing at the crazy shit libs supposedly believe and then presenting that as though it is self-evidently ridiculous to virtue signal to his conservative audience. He makes a big fuss out of how he's a big free thinker. He's gonna awaken you. You can awaken with him. He is the awakened one, like Buddha, but Christian. And I guess it's I guess it's it's just a big coincidence then that all of his free thinking opinions just so happen to be the meat-headed conservative catchphrases you'd expect. But yeah, sure, okay, yeah. Libs are performative. It is annoying. They're like that. I agree with you, actually. But is that your beef, Jeepers? That they're just insincere about the things they disagree with you about? If they actually believed these things, would you think that was okay or would you still be mad? Also, note to self, trademark the phrase beef Jeepers. And if they do believe it, then are you just mad that they're saying their opinions? That they're too forthright about what they believe? Because I thought you made no apologies for fighting for free speech. And, and this is, you know, kind of a major problem with the whole endeavor, I feel, is that I don't feel like libs dislike Christianity. I have not observed that growing up around mostly libs and mostly Christians, because, like, you know it's the main religion these days, right? Like, it's the biggest one with the most people, and it's kind of treated like the default like at least here in North America anyway. Like we all get Christmas off, you know? We don't get Eid off, we don't get Diwali off. I guess the main question I have is like, why do the libs in the sketch dislike Christianity? 
in in the fiction you've created? Do they have a reason? Because if they do, it would be a good, a dramatic exercise for them to say it out loud. And then you could, what you could do as a satirist is you could make fun of the reason because you stated it out loud. And it does feel like that should be the whole point of this, the whole point of this entire thing. That woman is making a major difference for the people in Ukraine. I am disowning you. What, disowning me? As the saying goes, explaining a joke is like dissecting a frog. Kind of a fucked up thing to do in most situations. Now you can't go back to the pet store. Uh, that's actually a really important part of jokes. Uh, I, I don't know if you knew that, because you explain a lot of your punchlines. <gasps> God, Dad, you don't need to wear that. Christianity is not contagious. Uh, I stand with Ukraine. That woman is making a major difference for the people in Ukraine. Tolerance means you only accept people who agree with everything you think and do. I'm pretty sure that that's the opposite of tolerance. The oceans are boiling! Go outside! It's 90 degrees out there! Yeah, it's summertime. It's 60 degrees hotter outside than it was just six months ago. It was winter six months ago! It really hurts the jokes. <gasps> You're not gonna start praying, are you? Are you? Mom's right. Brett, prayers are only for the last minute of sporting events. Well, I did pray for both of you this morning. <laughs> Why? Why does that upset her? How come? Because if I were in that situation, if I was the Christian daughter in that situation, I might ask that question. Hey, why, why, what, what are, why are you so upset? Why don't you like praying? Do you care to elaborate about that? Because that seems like a really strong reaction for what is, in my opinion, fairly normal thing to do. But the libs in this kid just fucking don't. They don't believe anything for any reason. They just say wacky, crazy stuff and nobody knows why. Where do they get this stuff? They're just cuckoo banana brains. And you would get from this the impression that these libs don't have any actual criticisms of Christianity, not even any invalid ones. They just hate it for no reason and they freak out when you talk about it and they yell at you and it doesn't make any sense and you just gotta sit there and let them do it. You can't ask like, Hey, why are you mad? What made you mad? If there was a God, why is he mistakenly giving me the wrong gender 19 times? I mean, Mom, it could be possible that God doesn't make mistakes and that you're just mistaken. I never make mistakes! I've heard this argument many times, this God doesn't make mistakes line, and each and every single time, without exception, someone will inevitably ask, well, how, then how come kids get cancer? How come people are born with, with heart defects? Do, should we not perform any kind of corrective surgery ever? Because that's just the way God wants it? Because God doesn't make mistakes? Just let that guy's ex appendix explode? It's fine? Well, sorry, diabetics. You're a little confused. You don't need a so-called insulin. God doesn't make mistakes. You've been indoctrinated by pancreatic ideology. Hey, what are, you, what are you doing, getting a haircut? God designed your hair perfect. How dare you interfere? What's next? You gonna start cutting your fingernails? Letting the dentist fill in the cavities that God, in his infinite wisdom, decided you should have to punish you for eating Skittles? And then the person who said it just kinda shuts up. They just kinda, like, they, they don't hear the words. They recognize that something has been said, but the, the substance of it is so destructive to their worldview that their brain protects them from it by just shutting down, just going into standby mode. They never seem to have a convincing counter argument, but that never seems to stop them from repeating this argument again later. And this, this feels like I shouldn't have to explain it, but like getting gender reassignment surgery or any other form of gender affirming care, or even just disliking your body and not changing it, does not mean that God made a mistake necessarily. Perhaps that person being trans is a part of God's plan. Maybe it was important to God that someone be born with the genitals that they later replace. See also their endocrine system or clothing, etc. How do you know? You're not omniscient, Japers. You're barely niscient. Are we to believe that God's plans for us begin and end with the design of our bodies? That God gave no thought whatsoever to the events of our lives? that we are not meant to be the stewards of our lives and bodies, but rather to thoughtlessly obey our shallow human estimate of God's great plan. That feels like a very unchristian view of God. Like he's completely checked out after putting our souls in our butts. And then, and then his primary concern is just that people don't mess up the, the sick ass bods he made and all, all of the cool gonads. 
It's it's a very bad argument if you think about it for even a, one second. And not only does this extremely dumb talking point go completely unchallenged, there, there's not even a response to it, really. Instead, the, the mother just responds to the claim that maybe they made a mistake. And they, they say they don't make mistakes. And like, is that a lib thing? Is that a thing libs do? Feels like there's a bigger problem going on. I don't feel like libs believe that they are incapable of making mistakes. That, that doesn't ring true to me. I really think you should rethink this choice. I mean, honestly, I was born this way. Been a long time since Sunday school for Slimo, but I do feel like a pretty big aspect of Christianity is that you aren't born Christian. You're born into sin, and I don't want to get into the whole thing, but basically, uh, like a million years ago, a guy ate a magic apple and God didn't like that, so he killed his son about it. That was something they seemed to think was pretty important, as I recall. And like, I do I do get the, for lack of a better word, joke he's he's making here. Gay people say that, so what, what if the Christian said it? You have to accept it for gay people, so you're a big hypocrite for not accepting it for Christians. And it's just that, like, it's not the same thing at all. The whole premise is is completely off. Like a lot of people pretend to believe that being gay is a choice and that everybody therefore ought to not choose it. And that's why they think conversion therapy is is anything. So the phrase, I was born this way, is meant to refute that idea, to explain that one's sexuality is beyond their control and thus not something they should be expected to change. And nowadays, even that is kind of seen as an old fashioned talking point because it, it concedes that if homosexuality were a choice, it would be reasonable to demand that people not choose it, which is not reasonable. More broadly though, um, it's very ghoulish and, and, a, and a very snide premise for a joke because gay people face discrimination when they come out of the closet, you know, like a lot of them are made homeless when they do that. And like they get hate crimed upon. Like it, just look at the stats. Queer people are uniformly more likely to be murdered or assaulted. Christians don't really have that experience from being Christian specifically. Like you could be Christian and gay. Sure. You can Christ it up in public as much as you want and nobody cares. Like when I was a kid, they made me go to church every Sunday. Sometimes everyone stayed afterwards even, and they would sometimes give us pancakes. And one time they had a TV and I got to watch the movie Hook. So say what you will about the Catholic church, I did get to see the movie Hook. My school was a Catholic school. We began every day with the Lord's Prayer, and it wasn't because my family was super religious or whatever. It's just that all of the public schools in my hometown were Catholic at the time. We had a referendum to secularize our schools in the late 90s, and it barely passed. You either went to Catholic school or you were homeschooled. The non-Christian kids in my class, because there were some, just went to the library and read books during our state-funded Catholic lessons. My school was, technically speaking, an appendage of my church. They had the same name and address. That's a level of institutional support that gay people have never and will never receive. Because it's not even support, really, is it? It's institutional capture. The church was the institution. Everything else had to appeal to it for support. Yeah, religiosity is decreasing, but that doesn't mean you're oppressed. Nobody's stopping you from being a big time Christ head just because they don't want to do it too. Just because I don't think your religion should control all of the laws anymore doesn't mean I think I should get to change your religion. I believe quite strongly you're entitled to your religious beliefs just as I am entitled to not share them. But the difference here is that people absolutely do attempt to use the state apparatus to actively suppress LGBTQ plus rights. They strip them of their right to marry their partners and all the legal protections that entails. They demonize life-saving medical interventions. They try to drive them all back into the closet. And like, some people might complain about me saying this, but it's, it's the truth and let's not dance around it. A lot of that suppression, especially, but not exclusively here in North America, is spearheaded by Christians. Not all Christians, obviously. It's certainly not in line with Christian values. Jizo is hanging out with sex workers and anointing their feet and telling people not to throw rocks unless they didn't sin. And guess what, dummy? Everybody sins, so nobody got to throw rocks. But like, it's church fuckers doing this. Let's not mince words about that. So it's weird, right? It's weird to be like, ha ha, he he, wouldn't it be funny if we got treated like we treat you guys? It's not like she doesn't believe in the climate crisis anymore. 
You don't believe in the climate crisis? But that's the religion we raised you in. I feel like Christians can believe in climate change because nothing in Bible says there can't be climate change. In Bible, God even makes fucked up weather sometimes on purpose as a goof. It's, it's a weird joke to me to say that climate change is the religion we raised you in because the joke there is that climate change isn't real, right? So that's a religious belief. It, it's not a real fact, but like, that's so fucking weird in a video about how religion is good and true. To use religion to meet a patently false, ridiculous thing a person believes irrationally? That's a comparison that makes sense if you're a climate change denying Reddit atheist. It's kind of a weird double standard if you're a religious guy. Go outside! It's 90 degrees out there! Yeah, it's summertime. Sweetheart, you know your mother thinks summer is just a social construct. Drug of piss seers. You utter meatball. Summer is a social construct. Like, yeah, there is a time of year when it is hotter, but the fact that we split years into discrete seasons is, in fact, socially constructed. So too are the seasons we split them into, which are not universal to every culture. In fact, in the long delay between writing this and filming this, I saw this clip from Adam Conover's interview with Jenny O'Dell, link in the descripto, that sums this up pretty well. Something that was kind of shocking to me was um, when I was reading about like colonization and time and the idea of the four seasons, you know, like that's, there are a lot of things that were exported from Europe time-wise, right? Like through colonization. And that's one of them is like one place's scheme of seasons, right? Being imposed onto places that have, you know, not four seasons might have like 12 seasons or, you know, it depends on how you define a yeah. season, right? Here in LA, right, right. people still say, oh, it's June, summer started. We've got really a dry season and a wet season. And so yeah. flowers bloom around January because that's when the rains have come. Right. Uh, right, right, right. But we're applying these terms that don't, you know, just uh, that don't apply because people just like brought them over from New York. And as you say, they brought them over it, from uh, Europe. You just don't you don't know what the word social construct mean, John Paul Sears. They, they don't mean something isn't real. Obviously, summer is real. Money is real. Kabuki theater is real. They're all social constructs, dude. They're categories we made up to describe stuff. The earth is getting hotter, demonstrably. It, it's, it's not just that it gets hot in summer, it's that it gets hotter each and every summer. Hotter than it was the previous summer, for, for decades on end. And the winters are also hotter than previous winters, because in general, the planet is warming, you see. Jeepers? Jeepers, my man. Do you? Do you think that what climate activists are talking about when they say global warming is summer? Do you think that climate activists believe that summer happens because of fossil fuels? And that's what we've meant this whole time. And we have all collectively failed to observe winter. You live in Texas, so maybe you could not notice a winter. Uh, I live in Ontario, Canada, and I, I got to tell you, we're quite aware of the phenomenon of winter. And also, just a um, fun little tidbit of, little bit of irony, um, I'm filming this right now at about three o'clock in the morning uh, because it's the only time that my house was cool enough to film it. Because despite having the AC cranked uh, all fucking day, it was blistering hot in this room because uh, Toronto's going through a heat wave right now. So just just fuck off with your climate change denial. Just fuck right off in, into oblivion forever, please. I, I cannot stress this enough that you saying it's just summer and, and believing that climate activists therefore must just think that it's the earth is getting hot because of summer is the least dumb explanation for this joke. Because 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 if, if 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 you don't think that if that isn't if that isn't the, your understanding, you would have to understand what an incredibly poor refutation of climate change this is. Like you would have to understand how it doesn't at all relate to the thing being discussed. Because like analogously, this is this is like if I I ate a couple's wedding cake right before their wedding. And they got mad at me and they said, why did you eat our wedding cake? And I said, uh, you're supposed to eat at dinner time. Okay, technically true, but I, I feel like you're missing a larger issue. And Jeepers, you know that the world doesn't get hotter during summer, right? You know that, right? You, you know about hemispheres, right? Like, 
it's important to me that you know that. The Earth revolves around the sun and it's, it's um, tilted on an axis, which means that at any given time, one side of the Earth is closer to the sun than the other. Whichever side is closer, that's the one getting summer. The other side is uh, getting winter. That's why around the equator, it tends to be quite temperate most of the year round. Um, one of the reasons that it doesn't make sense for there to be four seasons everywhere is that a lot of places they, they don't experience that. Just in case you didn't know, because it kind of seems like you didn't know. Dad, this is who I am. Even if you don't agree with me, can you just love me even though I'm a Christian? Sweetheart. Yes, of course. I mean, even though your mother is taking this very well, it's just a little hard for me to process. But you know I'll always love you no matter what. Oh, okay. So then what's the problem then? What's the... What, what is at all the problem? Well, imagine if you had to come out as Christian to your lib parents, uh, they'd probably have a hard time accepting it at first, but still love you and make a genuine effort to connect and understand. <laughs> Fucking got him! Dude, when queer kids come out of the closet, they're often kicked out of their homes. So, you know, inviting that comparison does kind of showcase the relative privilege here. Even in your exaggerated hyperbolic skit, you can't pretend like there's anything close to an equivalence. I really struggle to put myself in your mindset here and understand why you thought this would be a good idea. Also, he disowned her like a minute ago. I am disowning you. What, disowning me? You know I'll always love you no matter what. Thanks, Dad. The man just goes from willing to disown his daughter to thinking it's a little uncomfortable but fine in, in seconds. You're dead to me! Even if you don't agree with me, can you just love me even though I'm a Christian? Sweetheart. <sighs> yes, of course. Did you forget that you wrote that? Did you forget that happened? Did you forget everything that happened in this skit until now? Well, I'll see you later, Mom. <laughs> hey, I identify as a cat now. Where are we gonna put my litter box? Meow. Let's go pray for your mother. Did you forget what skit you were writing entirely? Django Fett with a PH series, did, how do you, how do, do you? Do you have a sexual fetish for making fun of trans people? Is that it? Is that what it is? Because like most of the jokes in this skit are about trans people and it doesn't really feel like that relates to the premise at all. So that feels like a weird thing to do. But hey, also, um, I just, you know, while we're on the subject of the whole identify as a cat thing and, and this is going to make this whole thing extra funny and show how JP is really funny and kind, and what he isn't is a fucked up, disgusting creep. He's referencing uh, a school that bought a bunch of kitty litter for students to use, and right-wing pundits just made up some absolute bullshit about kids identifying as cats, but uh, they actually bought it in the event that there was a school shooter. So for that emergency scenario, rather than just forcing children to sit in their own waste, they bought kitty litter boxes. And just sit a minute with that, just imagine the indignity of it. Like you're a young child having to shit in a litter box in front of everyone else, scared for your life as a murderer is rampaging through your school, killing your peers because conservative politicians have decided that your lives are irrelevant compared to the funding they get from the NRA. Only for them to turn around and act like your school is just indulging you in some fantasy about being a cat. And then you just try to forget it all. You log onto YouTube and this smug ginger caveman is mocking you for the desperate measures you had to take to survive in a situation that he and people like him engineered because it was slightly easier than taking any measure to protect the lives of children. And I don't know, man. I don't know. It just doesn't feel very Christ-like to me. It doesn't feel like you're loving your neighbor. It doesn't feel like you're doing onto others as you'd have them do onto you. But you know what? It, it does kind of feel like you're bearing false witness a little bit, actually. Beyond the thoughtless cruelty of it, on a pure comedy level. Just think how much harder this punchline would have landed if the dad had stayed mad at the daughter, if he'd continued to be spitting mad like, ah, no daughter of mine is going to be some filthy Bible fucker. And then the wife does the kitty litter thing and he's like, oh, fuck it, let, let's pray. Or, you know, just have him drop to his knees and start praying immediately. He doesn't comment on it. He just starts praying. And then it cuts to heaven and there's God and God's like, I don't know, man. I don't know what to do about that one. Do anything. 
do a joke. But actually, I take it all back because you know what would be funnier? What what would be funnier is if two minutes of this seven minute video were JP pitching dodgy supplements to you at the end. Buy some magnesium from a website. It'll be good for you or something. Just put some website chemicals into your body. This video is seven minutes long. I wrote this many words about it. Also, it has a million and a half views at the time of recording. That's kind of ironic because it's a video about Christianity, but I think that fact kind of serves as pretty conclusive evidence that there is no God. Ah, it's the fucking eyeball zone! Here in the eyeball zone, an eyeball walks into a bar. The bartender says, what'll it be? And the eyeball says, I'd like one small creator to highlight, please. And the bartender says, but doctor, I am Pagliacci. So a lot of this video has been about a moron's view of what trans people are like and how self-evidently ridiculous a lot of conservatives find the idea of gender expression not mapping neatly onto quote unquote biological sex. And the thing is, the thing about that is that biological sex doesn't even neatly map onto biological sex. In Matt Walsh is wrong about sex, excellent phrasing, the biological sex constellation, Jackson Wagon does, does a real deep dive into the specifics of why it's impossible to split biological sex into a strict binary like ding-dongs want to. And it's not just semantics. This rhetoric has serious implications for the health and medical treatment of intersex people whose bodies become politicized or erased in a malicious effort to maintain patriarchal standards. This is a topic a lot of people touch on. I've touched on it in a lot of videos, but Jackson does so much more thoroughly and with a clear and concise visual presentation that it's definitely worth watching. They style it all as like picking settings in an iPhone menu and it, it works really well. It conveys the point exceedingly well. Watch this and then ever in your life try and tell me that shit is simple ever again. And I guess the only thing I, I'm wondering is, do you have a small project you'd like to subject to the unceasing gaze? Send no more than one email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com with the word eyeball somewhere in the subject line in pertinent details like your preferred pronouns, and maybe you'll find yourself here in the eyeball zone. Thanks for watching this one. I know it's been a while since uh, uploads. If you didn't see my short, if you didn't see the short that I made, uh, basically my shooting space is um, what we call in the biz turbo fucked. I'm temporarily back in the sewers. Hopefully that situation isn't going to last forever. We'll see. It's very hot in my new office. If you like this video, button, the button, there's a button for it. Also, give me money on Patreon if you want.